This is Luke from Email Electric, and we're here today to talk about the new Torquedo travel motors. So the travel motors from Torquedo were really the first electric outboards on the market that had an integrated battery sitting right on top of the shaft. Torquedo was founded about 20 years ago, and they've just last year revamped their travel motors, and they've really added a lot of great new features. So today, we're gonna to talk about the older travel mo model, the newer travel model, the differences there, and show you what's new. And if you're interested in seeing one of these motors on the water, check out our video on the Travel XP that we did on a 19 foot sailboat earlier this year, and we'll link that in the description below. So on my left is the Travel 1103. That was the previous version of the Travel, the three horsepower model. And on my right, we've got the Travel XP, which is the new five horsepower version of the Travel. Um, in the past, you could get either the 603 or the 1103. The 603 was two horsepower and the 1103 is three horsepower. Um, and there was just one, one battery. Now, there's a few different combinations here. So there's the Travel S, which looks just like this motor, but it's a three horsepower. Then there's the Travel XP, which is what you're looking at right here, which is equivalent to a five horsepower. Um, you can get the Travel S, so the three horsepower version with the larger battery. Um, and then they call that the range package. Um, or you can just get the XP. If you go that route, you have to get the bigger battery. And then they also have the adventure package where uh, it's a kayak version like Torquedo has had for quite a long time. So the, uh, the batteries themselves, you can see they look quite different here. In the older version, you have wires that run from the motor to the battery and from the tiller to the battery. On the new version, those cables are gone. Um, take the battery on and off, you pull this up, slide the battery back, raise it up, and you can see right here, that's the port on the battery. And then on the motor, you've got the port there. One thing that I love about this is now there's a cap for that. So when it's not in use, you put the cap on it, it prevents corrosion. And then when you wanna put your battery on, you let it slide in there, push it forward, and that click connects your data cable, your power cable, and of course physically connects the battery to the motor. It's a lot easier than on the old one where you have to unscrew your power cable, pull it off, unscrew your data cable, pull it off, pull out your pin, which is very easy to lose. There's no pin on the new version, thankfully. Uh, and then take the battery off. You also really, on the old one, you really had to get the battery kind of vertical to pull it off. Um, on the new version, you still have to lift it up, but it's not nearly as high. It's probably at 45 degrees instead of closer to 90 degrees on the old version. So major improvement there. Uh, in terms of battery capacity, the... Um, Older battery here was about 900 watt hours. I forget exactly what it is, but somewhere in there. The new XP battery here is uh, 1425 watt hours. And the new battery for the Travel S is 1080 watt hours. So the bigger motor, the five horsepower requires that bigger battery. Um, but even if you're sticking with the three horsepower, the capacity is a little bit higher than, than the other one. I believe it was 915 watt hours for this one here. Um, so not only are the batteries a little bit bigger, uh, but also a lot uh, easier to put on and off. The other thing that I really like is there's also a cap for the charging port here. One of the things that drives me kind of nuts about the old version of this is that while there is actually a cap for the charging port, there's no cap for either of those um, ports on the battery or the ones that come off of the tiller and the motor. So another major area of improvement on the new travel is the tiller. So with the old travel, the tiller was removable. 
you had to put it on and off every time. Again, another piece you could lose. Um, and the screen was not color, it was very simple. Um, and the tiller itself couldn't, once it's locked in, you can't move it down. You can move it up a little bit, but if you move it up too much, then it just comes out. On the new travel, the tiller is built in to the motor itself. So, well actually you can remove it if you wanna change this to a remote version and buy that kit. Um, you can't, it's not designed to remove Ever, all the time like the older one so and you can raise it all the way up like that or when you depress this lever there drop it all the way down and if we weren't on the stand here it would actually go even further down and get totally out of the way so this is a really nice feature depending on the transom of your boat on some boats you kind of always have to have this tilted up a little bit you can also adjust the friction for the tiller raising up and down by adjusting this machine screw in here. So I think we've tightened ours a little bit so it'll stay where it is without falling, but you can adjust it to your preference. Um, also, the part of the tiller that you actually hold with your hand feels a lot smoother and just kind of higher quality than the older one. This one's a little bit rougher on movement uh, and the grip on the new one's much more comfortable on your hand. Um, the other thing is the screen here. So this screen on the new travel is actually the same as the uh, torque link throttle that Torquedo has used for their larger electric outboards for quite a long time. You can see that um, the display here has a few different options and it is color. So you can cycle through, decide which screen you like the best. Um, this is my favorite. It gives you your state of charge up here, your uh, run time remaining in minutes and nautical miles. Right now our motor's not on, um, so you can't see that. You can also see your speed in knots, your power output in watts, and your RPMs. If you compare that to the older travel screen, actually need to hold on a second because we have to plug these cables back in. Not only do you save time not having to deal with these cables, but a lot of the issues that we've seen um, with these travels have to do with the cables and the contacts. So by reducing um, the number of ports and eliminating the cables, I think Torquedo is going to see a lot less issues arise uh, from those. As you can see on the old motor here, you get your state of charge, um, and then you get uh, your run time there, I believe your speed is there, power output and watts. So it still gives you pretty much the same information, uh, but it certainly is a little bit more user friendly on the new Torquedo motor here. Um, the other really cool thing about these new motors is that you can update them from your phone. So Torquedo has made a new app, and if there's a software update for one of these motors, you download it to your phone, and then you can connect to your motor, uh, your phone can connect to your motor, either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and push that update onto the motor. Uh, in the past, with these older motors, you'd have to bring it to a dealer to have an update pushed into the motor. And not only does that app allow you to update your motor, but it also shows you um, GPS tracks, history, and some cool other features. It kind of acts like a chart plotter um, in some, some respects. So that's kind of neat as well. So the other huge, huge area of improvement that Torquedo has made to these new motors is unlocking and locking your steering, uh, adjusting your steering friction, and the whole tilt and trim system. So on the old Torquedo motors, if you wanted to lock the motor in place. So this was common with sailors, right? You could make it so this motor can't turn and then steer with your boat spreader. In order to do that, you'd have to remove the battery and put a pin in or take the pin out if you wanted to unlock it. So we'll show you how that used to work. So I'm gonna undo our cables again here. Power cable off, get the data cable off, take out our locking pin, remove the battery, and then the pin would go in right there. So obviously not particularly easy to do. 
And then if you wanted to adjust the steering friction, you would have to take off this whole um, plate here and then uh, adjust it inside of there. So not too difficult, but not something that's particularly fast and easy to do. On the new travel motor, it's super easy to lock and unlock the steering. And there's actually three different settings. So if you look back here, there's this tab, slides up and down. If we have it all the way down, this motor can spin 360 degrees. Can't spin all the way around right now because of how we have it set on our bracket here. But um, the time that's really nice is if you're gonna take the battery on and off, you can spin that all the way around. And if you picture me on the stern of a boat with water behind me, I don't have to be reaching back here to deal with the battery. I can take my battery off or put my battery on and then spin my motor around um, without leaning over the water. So on that setting, you can move the motor in 360 degrees. If you bring this up one, now you can only turn it 60 degrees to either side. So that's generally plenty for normal operation. Uh, and the nice part about that is then when you raise your motor up, it can only turn so far to the side with uh, the older version it would or if you have this unlocked right the battery is heavy so it wants to sit like that and then it's kind of in the way oftentimes this is hitting your boat um, so having that middle setting is really nice because it can only go to the side so much all right we're going to drop this back down and then finally, if you push this all the way up, it locks it in place. So again, if you're a sailor, especially if you're coming in or out of a tight slip, um, right, and you need to be able to turn both the tiller of the motor and the tiller of your boat, um, and you want to unlock this, you push that down, you can steer however you need to steer. And then once you're out of your slip, if you want to lock this off, just get that centered, push that all the way up. Um, the uh, oh and the steering friction on this one are these two uh machine screws back here so instead of having to take off four machine screws to get to the same two you can access them uh just from the back there next we'll talk about the tilt and trim so this is something that really uh really annoys me with electric outboards Torquedo's been around for 20 years. I'm not sure why it took them quite this long to figure that out, but they finally, finally have. Uh, on the old version here, you're either all the way down, or if you wanna raise your motor up, it comes up like that. There's only two settings there, nothing in the middle. And you can see at the highest setting here, this is not 90 degrees, right? So this, if you have an angled transom or a low transom, the pylon here could be hitting the sand, or if you're towing your dinghy, it could be in the water. Um, it can't quite get up all of the way. And then also the unlock to this is kind of, kind of dinky here, not the most robust thing in the world. Uh, on the new motors, they have solved that. So we'll leave our steering lock in the center. Um, if you want to lock or unlock the motor, um, you just pull this tab up. So right now it's unlocked. So if you were to hit ground, it would pop up. Um, if this tab is down, it's locked. So if you're ever coming in um, to a shallow area, make sure you pull that tab up. But if you are in shallow water and you just want to lift your motor up a little bit, but not all the way, you'll lift this tab up, push down on your tiller. There's one shallow water angle. There's another shallow water angle. There's one more. You're probably pretty close to out of the water on most boats here. You can go up again there, again there, and then finally all the way up to 90 degrees. So even if you have an angled transom, even if you have a low transom, this pretty much guarantees that that pylon can be all the way up and out of the water. Um, 
Again, our steering is locked here, but if it's unlocked, then the motor could turn like that. So make sure that you have your steering locked or at least set to the uh, 60 degree setting if you're gonna bring your motor up that much. It looks, sounds like a simple thing, but um, it's taken, taken a long time and there are other manufacturers that haven't, haven't gotten there yet. So having those multiple tilt trim angles, being able to get that pylon all the way up uh, really does go a long way. One of the other upgrades that Torquedo has made is uh, their charger. So now the standard AC charger that comes with the new Travel is a 180 watt charger. That's double up from a 90 watt charger that came with the 1103, which means the new motors will charge faster. Uh, and the other upgrade they've made has to do with kind of portability and security. So if you pull your battery off, you can see now that there is this handle. And not only does it make a good point to carry this motor from, but it also is a great place to lock up your motor. Uh, if you look at the older version, there really wasn't anywhere good to lock the shaft to your dinghy or your sailboat um, or anything like that. So this one can be a lot, a lot more secure. Um, that's about it for the new features for the travel. Uh, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. It goes a long way for us. And if you have any questions about these electric outboards, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Give us a call, send us an email. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these Torquedo motors, head over to our online store and we'll be happy to get one to you.